Welcome back to Dungeon Master's Corner. Today, we have a different host leading the game. This was his first time DMing, and he was kind enough to share it with us. Welcome back to the Dungeon Master Corner. I am Brian. I'm Andrew Brown. I'm Nicole Summers. And today we have a special episode uh, because Andrew was our DM. And Andrew, what was so special about this particular game as a Dungeon Master? Oh, oh, um, what was so special is uh, it was my first time DMing because one of my friends have never played before and he wanted to try. I initially thought I was going to be a player and then no one wanted to DM. Like most games that happen with, I feel, a lot of friends. I don't want to do this. Anyone want to DM? Uh, fine, I'll do it. <laughs> but, but, uh, so in the end I started playing and I was like, okay, give me like two weeks or something to like prep and like kind of because I was like, oh, I'll do uh, something simple like Lost Minds of Vendelver. And as I was going through it, I'm like, because I've played through it before. And I was like, all right, but I played enough D&D where I'm like, I don't want to just do the normal one. I want to like tweak it a little. I'm going to do the basic like story points, but I'm going to add a little flair to it. A little panache. He gave it panache. Oh, dear. Oh, yeah. And uh, also, uh, this is a story about going to be a story about how I completely changed one character's entire path in the game first session hi <laughs> and brian was one of my players i i was the player who you changed in fact yes that, that was me uh yes it is so for that game i was playing placid placid as you may have been able to tell by the naming convention was a tiefling and he was a paladin of eldath goddess of peace uh, I really wanted with this one to play a redemption paladin. I wanted to play that paladin who was like, hey, let's not fight. Let's talk it out. Let's work it out. And how well did that end up working out for you? Oh, mistakes I... Mistakes were made. Mistakes were made. <laughs> you say mistakes. I say, oh my god, this turned out better than I could have imagined. No, it's fine, but pretty much from my end, literally, it was just like, oh. But uh, we'll get to that in a hot second. <laughs> <laughs> and let's have uh, Nicole mention what she was doing. Oh, I was the co-DM helping Andrew out because it was his first time DMing. And I'd been DMing a little bit before, so I was I was the assistant and the note taker. You know, like uh, first DM panic attack being like I needed like a security blanket and Nicole was that because mm-hmm. she's pretty much better at note taking and keeping track of worlds than any DM I've ever played with before. <laughs> so or uh, finding things. She is our little Hufflepuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there were moments where Andrew's like, I need a stat block, I need a stat block, and go. just zoop. Yeah, we heard the Discord message in the background. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Thank you, Nicole. <laughs> I had his um, back. Yeah. I was not prepared for what he was about to do. <laughs> yeah, no, pretty much. It, I And I will say, Ryan, that entire, like, uh, you know what? I'm just going to start with what happened. So, yeah. usually in Fendalen, you ride into town and everything. You have to deal with the red brand stuff like that. I'm like... Oh, no, you have to deal with the goblins first. Yep, goblins first. And I was like, okay, I want to do some a little bit dark, maybe a little madness thing. And I'm like, all right, here we go. So I was like, oh, we're going to do basically a dream sequence. Basically, everyone fucking dies and then just wakes up on the cart. And it's just like emotional trauma right away. And I'm like, cool. D and D, where you need more emotional trauma. Yeah. <laughs> so we do the whole thing. Basically, they're just like, "I, oh my god, we're all gonna die." And I, pretty much, I just remember uh, at least one of the moments where Brian and one of my other players was just like, "Well, I guess this is where we die." And I was like, in the back of my head, I'm like, "You'll be fine, don't worry." And pretty yeah, much, it, we're gonna die. We're gonna die on our terms. So basically, what happened with that was, I just wreck their shit with waves and waves of things because I wanted it to be like a bad nightmare of just like what I wanted to do with the campaign. The campaign is technically still going on 
but I wanted it to be like a foreshadow of just like, oh, these may be some of the monsters you'll deal with down the road. And I was pretty much they were leveling up almost as soon as they got to Fendalen anyway, because they started at level one because some of them were new players. And I was like, OK, this is a good way for them to learn the skills, but also get a little bit of flair to it. And we did take a couple things down. You did. We surprised you. We took a couple things down. You did. I killed one of the NPCs, which basically emotionally destroyed our cleric for a hot second. But he's a very special case. Uh, Dick Hardwood. I miss you so much. Yeah, you gotta say it right. Dick Hardwood. So, we go through all that. They do it. They wake up. Everything's great. And I thought, oh, and maybe as a first-time DM, the idea of, oh, I'm gonna be clever may not be the best idea for future DMs out there. Sometimes you just go You do not listen to him. This was an amazing twist. (laughs) Anyway... You can do what you want, but in my opinion, I should have pulled back a little. So I start with, okay, the ones who actually have gods and everything, get a warning from their god was the idea of. The whole thing, and their players know about this right now, the god of madness is basically slowly creeping into the world, trying to come back to the world, everything. And yes, they are low-level players, so I was everything I was doing was adjusting to that, because... The end of Fendalen, they weren't going to face a full-blown god. That would have just been mean. So basically, I was doing like little things to tweak, like them getting madness, certain dreams, and stuff like that. Just to so make this thing, weird. yeah. So in the end, weird Maget. Each one of them gets a dream. Like for for Dick, it was as the spider killed him, everything went black, and she saw two arms wrap around him. His god was Lathander. And just whisper into his ear that death is inevitable. Be my champion. You know, sweet. Pumping him up for the next bit. Yeah. And then for Brian, the god of peace. He anticipated the arms of his goddess. You know, he thought of regrets that he has and like expecting that warm hug. And then he hears next to his ear. You and your companions are our only hope. Peace will not be an option. Looking back on it, I probably should have been a little more descriptive. Maybe when the goddess of peace mutters to a champion of hers, peace is not an option. Yeah, because that became my mantra. Yes, it did. The goddess of peace told me the whole thing she's about was no longer an option. And right there, I I looked at you. Yeah, I saw the <laughs> smile on your face and that's where I knew I fucked up. I grinned. I, I, I said, you done goofed. Yeah, yeah, you did. Because you did. I was no longer walking the path of the Redemption Paladin. My goddess told me that wasn't an option. So pa- Placid, so Placid, took a a hard left and as soon as we leveled up to level 3 I became a conquest paladin yep peace will be an option (laughs) there will be peace because I am going to make there be peace and I wanted so hard to shift my because I was lawful good I wanted to shift my alignment over time into lawful evil and Dick was trying so hard to stop that from happening. Like you, do, you haven't got there yet. You haven't got there yet. <laughs> you know, I, I know, I know. But when we got to Fandalen, I I was starting to play the, the more of the hard ass. I was starting to play more of the like, okay, peace is not an option. I give you a chance to surrender. If you don't take it, peace is not an option. I cut you down. You, there will be peace through your death kind of mentality. And there, there was one thing I wanted. There was one thing I wanted because... Because you, you put us against those red brands and... Yep. We'll leave the story of how we stopped the red brands another day. But by the end of that fight with the, the red brands, I say fight. Um, I made a demand of the town. I demanded the sheriff's star. I demanded to be made sheriff of the town because, obviously, my goddess had told me I need to restore peace. 
I needed to restore peace here first, and there's only one way to do it, and that's through the law. And in order for me to do that, I had to be the law. And I wanted one thing more than anything else. And you were- you gave it to me, kind of. You gave me that hat. Oh yeah, no. <laughs> I wanted a black Stenson. I wanted a black cowboy hat. And... Peter kept going, hey, Are you sure you don't want, you know, a white one? <laughs> white cowboy hat? <laughs> white hat? Uh, nope, black hat. I want a black hat. And, and you met us halfway. Your, it did contrast with your, your skin very well. Yes, I, I had uh, a white skin and, and horns and, like, like white. But you met me halfway. You met the two of us halfway on that one. You gave me a gray hat. Hmm, okay. Which, honestly, I appreciated more because, again, I wanted that, that alignment shift slowly to happen. Yeah. Well, with one line, you defined Placid's character, and you made him... I have to say, infinitely more interesting with that with that one line. Oh, I didn't know I, that. I did. I did not know that. I will say that he is an interesting character for that reason. But oh, I did absolutely. not know that you felt like that. Oh yeah, no, you loved the you, character. I didn't know the reason. You defined that character with that one sentence and made him from a like this might be a cool concept to this is a character and I love this character. All, right. All because you gave him a direction. Fair enough. Happy accidents, people. <laughs> Happy accidents, indeed. And also, I now have this lovely ornament that reminds me every day that peace is not an option. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Nicole, for doing ornaments Thank you, every Nicole. Year. You're welcome. Yes, Nicole painted my holy symbol for Placid on the other side, wrote, Peace is not an option, so I will never forget the lesson I learned that day. Yep, yep. But also, I will say this for future DMs. This was an amazing story, and Brian's a good role player that he made it into something. It made my life a little more difficult, slightly. But also, that was because of naivety of me not being DMing a long time to know these little tricks and things of things to and not to do. Basically, moral of the story, be careful what you say. Accidents happen, but sometimes they can truly make a character. And don't be afraid to try to DM if you ever think you can't you never know what might happen all right so thank you for joining us for the dungeon master's corner i have been brian i am andrew brown and i'm nicole we hope to see you in our next episode and we hope you enjoyed thank you very much bye, bye. <laughs> thank you for joining us for another episode of dungeon master's corner if you'd like to support us, please visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash reliablychaotic so I can finally get my black hat. You can also drop us a line on Twitter at reliablychaotic. We'd love to hear from you.